Hello, welcome to Vistas Learning. In Vistas Learning, our mission is to provide quality education for all. Today is a very important class because your board exams are near and we are going to revise chapter 6 which is Manufacturing Industries. Now this is a very very important chapter from your examination point of view. A lot of questions might come, small questions, long questions might come, one mark questions might come from this chapter because a lot of concepts have been uh, compacted in this chapter and it covers a lot of uh, concepts. So what we will do, we will do one short revision, we will not go into the details of the chapter because you have studied the chapters, you know the chapter very well till now, by now. What we are going to do today is we are only going to solve the important questions, previous year questions we are going to solve and we are going to do the map work. Now in your exams, you know from geography, three chapters are coming, right? We are already done with the mineral and power resources from which the uh, from that chapter only map questions were coming. And from this chapter, map questions are there. Then some theoretical questions are also there. So we'll try to solve all of the previous year's questions from 2016 to 2020, 20. So we'll see what questions were coming frequently so that you can get an idea what sort of questions will be coming from this chapter and it'll be, uh, it'll get more easier for you. So let's just get started and let's do our revision first. So manufacturing industry. So before we do, before we solve the question papers, let's just get an idea what this chapter is all about. I'm sure by now you all have revised this chapter. You all know what this chapter is all about. But just briefly, we are going to talk what manufacturing industries are. So industries which are dealing with production, uh, converting of raw materials to finished goods. They are called manufacturing industries. Now, industries can come under primary sector, secondary sector and tertiary sector. So, you all know what primary, secondary and tertiary sectors are. In primary sectors, mainly agriculture, fishery, forestry, such kinds of industry comes into being. Then in secondary sector, we talk about mainly manufacturing industries where labors are needed, where workers are needed. Then in tertiary sectors, we, you know, uh, where IT sector, it comes under uh, tertiary sector, all the service sectors, communication sectors, they come under the tertiary sector. But manufacturing industry, they are under which sector? They are under secondary sector. And what do they do? They are related with converting or transforming the raw materials to finish goods. Suppose there is a farm where sugarcane is grown. So what is that industry? That is the agriculture industry. So that is the primary industry. So if you bring your sugarcane to a factory where the sugarcane is converted to sugar, then what is that industry? That is the manufacturing industry. So this is how manufacturing industries are different from the primary sector industries and the tertiary sector industries. So what we will do is first, uh, okay, so now let's talk about the importance of manufacturing industry. So we'll see how the manufacturing industries is uh, are having an impact in our economy, how it is growing our GDP, how it is increasing our national income. We will see all of that. How we will see that? There is a previous year question have come from this part where they have asked about the importance of manufacturing industry in the development of the Indian economy. So in that, that time when we will be solving the question paper, that time we will uh, be studying about what is the importance of manufacturing industry. Points are given to you for your understanding. It is, I have already given you the answers and so that you can revise, not, you have already studied this chapter first. The secondary sector, sector industries, they are exclusive. They are including each other. They cannot run without each other. They run parallelly. Like, for example, only uh, if you are growing uh, cotton. So, 
only if you're growing cotton then we what do we have we only have the raw material so what is the use of the raw material there is nothing we can do with just only cotton some were uh, they we can use that raw cotton for some purposes like uh, maybe uh, what do you use to wipe your face in laboratories you use the raw cotton but from uh, but when you convert this raw cotton to textiles or bandages, then what happens? You are converting that raw cotton from primary sector to now it has come to secondary sector. So we see that how the primary sector agriculture and manufacturing industries, they are moving hand in hand. They are growing together. And with the manufacturing industries, now what we see that a lot of industrialization has happened uh, all over the world and with industrialization what we see urbanization is also happening because people are attracted to places where industries are present why because industries they create job opportunities so with the growing of industries what is happening is there is competition among different industry they are competing amongst each other and why are they competing for what they are competing for good quality products to consumers to go out and buy their products their products have to be different it has to be of good quality so that is the challenge in globalization so as we are connected by different industries we export we import which leads to globalization which leads to connection so this is a challenge with that of manufacturing industries that the quality of the product whatever you are producing producing should be of good quality so moving forward how is the manufacturing industries helping in the growth and development of our country what it what it does it is having an impact in the growth of the GDP. So we see that in India, all industries from primary, secondary and tertiary sector, what they do, they are contributing in the growth of GDP by 27%. This is by all industries. And by manufacturing industries, they contribute 17% of the GDP of the 27% under which 17% is alone contributed by the manufacturing industries in India. So I hope till here students, your concepts regarding manufacturing industries is clear. We talked in which sector it comes in, importance we're going to talk a little later, then how agriculture and manufacturing industries, they move hand in hand parallelly. What is the challenge and what is the percentage they're contributing in the GDP. So, whatever they are contributing in the growth of the economy in India, it is even now far less than many of the, uh, some of the uh, Asian, East Asian countries. East Asian countries meaning China or Japan. It is now even less, it is uh, now also less than these country so what india needs to do india needs to increase its manufacturing industries it's the quality of the products it is producing it should be cheap of good quality so some standards have to be brought in the products manufactured by such industries so that we can so that such industries can contribute more to the growth of the economy so what is the desired row, uh, growth for a country like india how much growth should be there in manufacturing industries the desired rate of such industries is that of 12 percent so if 12 percent growth rate is there in manufacturing industries then a good uh, economy india can develop more properly the economy can expand more nicely so if it is 12 percent per annum but what is our actual growth the actual growth rate of manufacturing industries is very less it is in fact almost half of 12 percent which is seven percent but since 2003 we have seen a lot of industries grow mncs have come they have settled here a lot of industries are set up now and there was a growth in the manufacturing industries since 2003 it has risen up to uh, maybe nine or ten percent but now again we have seen that the growth is nowadays presently it is again slowing down so the desired growth rate is 12 percent per annum our rate is seven percent and it grew since 2003 but presently it is again 
declining. So to see that these industries are growing or not, if it is helping in the growth of the country, in the growth of the economy or not, government makes various policies, policies such as uh, which will help in their growth and development, which will make the market more flexible, widen the market, uh, set up a um, fixed price, maybe a uh, fixed price, then about taxation. So various policies have been brought up by the government. So one such institution that the government has or the association or a council that a government has set up for the growth of manufacturing industries in India is the National Manufacturing Competitiveness Council, NMCC. So this is the council that the government of India has, where is the pen? Why is it not working? Let me take some other color. So what government has done? It has established NMCC. For what? For mayor. seeing that the growth of the manufacturing industries are happening in the desired rate. So the aim is to achieve the desired growth rate of what? Of manufacturing industry. So question might arise from this part and earlier what we see questions have come from this portion and uh, they might also ask question to explain how agriculture and manufacturing industries are exclusive in nature how they move in uh, move hand in hand so now i hope it is clear how they move hand in hand i've talked about the raw materials how it is taken and then converted suppose cotton raw material it is taken and converted into textiles or uh, laboratory some uh, uh, laboratory appliances, equipments or what you need in uh, little things in laboratory, bandages in hospitals. So you can write about different uh, agriculture and manufacturing industries, how they run parallelly uh, for their growth. So one question, two questions we have talked about. We can talk about the growth of manufacturing industries where you can say about the GDP, uh, how much they are contributing, 17% they are contributing and uh, what is the desired rate, what is the actual rate and what was the aim of NMCC, National Manufacturing Competitive Council. So we have seen uh, how uh, small questions can be framed even from the introduction but now I will not go into the details of what are the industries, major industries that are present in India because in this lesson in this session we are only going to solve the previous year's question papers so that it gets easier for you to write in the exams because now it is very it is high time we have reached very close to your exams so all we need to do is the revise important concepts so we'll not go every time we'll not go into the detail so for the location of the manufacturing industries where what are the factors that uh, that needs to be looked after when you, you know, decide to establish a manufacturing industry. So what are the factors that are needed? You simply cannot uh, establish a factory in some place. You have to see that all of the factors are present in that place or not. So what are the factors? Availability of raw materials. You have to see wherever you are establishing the industry, the raw material there is available or not. Or if you have settled the uh, industry but other factors are present except for the raw materials then you will have to make ensure that the raw materials is being brought from some imported from some other place transportation and communication is there for the availability of the raw materials or uh, sometimes what happens you even set up your industries in places near the resource where the raw material is already present like for example we see that a lot of iron and steel industries are present in Karnataka because Karnataka is rich in iron ore or then in Jharkhand area also iron and steel industries are present because it is already rich in such kinds of raw materials so this is how you set up manufacturing industry so this is very important you have to check that the availability of raw material is there or not secondly labor because such industries comes into secondary sector what it needs it needs workers it needs laborers to work in the industries to look after the manufactured products so for that you need people to be working so labor is needed for manufacturing industry you simply cannot uh, establish a industry in a place which is very much isolated and 
Um, just because the raw material is present there, you go and establish your industry, you'll have to check that you also find people who can come and work in the industry. Then you need, what you need? You need capital because any industry for any, uh, to set up any industry, what you need? You need investments, you need money to establish the industries to buy the equipments the appliance the instruments to pay the labors so for that what you need you need heavy investment so in public sectors what happened the government is investing in private sectors what happens these company themselves they are investing and then they make ensure that their industry is earning profits or not then what you need you need the market and what market you need a wide market suppose you're producing one product but there is no market nobody is interested in buying your product then what happens everything fails out at last nothing will work out if there is no market so you have to make ensure that the market is there people are going to buy your product it is widened meaning uh it is uh expanding meaning it covers a lot of area it is not just confined to people in consumers in some uh, confined area but it is spread out that is your product is exported it is moved to different places then government policies government policies meaning there should not be any restrictions for the marketing of your or the selling of your products and uh, other policies like the government checks that the market is flexible or not regarding uh, taxation and all recently like uh, in agriculture we have seen uh, they have given some minimum prices are set up for the farmers so that poor farmers can still uh, sell their products if the if there is uh, the market is less so there are different policies that the government looks after for widening the market for making it flexible or sometimes even putting restrictions uh, in certain industries so you have to check all of these factors to what to establish your industry to see uh, to locate your industry so these are the factors that is needed so this one important question might also come from this area they might ask you on what basis you are go uh, a manufacturing industry is established in a place what are the factors what are the features or where it is located on what basis the manufacturing industries are located so i hope this is clear and i have already explained that how industries have helped in the growth of people how industrialization and urbanization go hand in hand earlier what we saw we saw that agriculture and manufacturing industries they go hand in hand now again second question is what industrialization and urbanization also go hand in hand how because when industries are set up people are attracted facilities are there job opportunities are there because of which what happens cities are built up uh, the places they get modernized uh, and this is how we see that industrialization and urbanization also moves parallelly because with the coming of industries that place uh, also gets developed. So we saw two questions now. We, they can ask you about uh, primary sector and manufacturing industries moving hand in hand and how industrialization and urbanization move hand in hand. So let's now discuss about the importance of manufacturing industry. So students in the previous class I have told you so, sorry not in the previous class previous slide I have told you that the importance of manufacturing industries we are going to talk about in the question. So we'll see the question will arise now but let's just try to solve the questions that have come in the previous year. That have came in the previous year so first question is what why did the textile exports from india not decline in the late 18th century so india you know has been producing uh, here they have only asked about textiles but le let me just tell you the entire story because uh, in textile industries what we have we have majorly we have cotton industry and jute industry it is there in your textbook so they have asked you that even after a lot of industrialization that has hit not just India but all over the world in the 18, late 18th century in fact um, uh, England uh, portion European uh, Europe countries were growing rapidly uh, with that of industrialization but even after that the textiles that were exported from India to the European countries or some other countries to South Asian countries or to 
African countries, it was not declining. There was not a decline. So what was it? We know that if we talk about the cotton industry, the Indian India's cotton has been famous not just in 18th century, but from BC. Uh, very ancient times, it is very famous. So Indian cotton have always, always attracted the market. Apart from that, in the 18th century, in the late 18th centuries, a lot of industries, textile industries were being set up in India so that what happened is um, the pro products were produced in the mills. There were equipments, facilities were there for the products to be made into the finished products, uh, finished products and then that products could be exported out to some different countries. So technology was uh, advent of technology had happened in India. So this was the reason why the textile exports did not stop from India. So the first textile mill, see, this was in fact the cotton mill, which was set up in Mumbai in the year 1854. See, in the year 1854 itself, the cotton mills, uh, textile industries were set up in Mumbai. So, the India was already equipped with industries, modern technology. So it was able to produce, not just uh, produce the raw material in agriculture, they were also able to produce the manufactured goods and export it to other countries. So the cotton mill was set up in Mumbai in 1854. We had technology hit India in 1854. 1859, we see the jute mill was there, set up near Kolkata at Vishra. So we see how technology had hit India in the late 18th century itself. So we had modern industries. Then thirdly, which is the most important point over here was in the late 18th century, what was happening? Uh, world war was there. Two of the world wars we have seen from 1914 to 18 and one was from till 45, right? So Two of the world wars were there, were fought during which UK or the British colonies, they were engaged completely in the war weaponry. They were investing more on the war. So whatever the demand of cotton or textile was there, whatever the industries were present in present there, they were uh, losing their market. The demand was falling there, uh, there because all of the investment were going into the war so what it did for india it brought good news although in india british colonies were only there and they were only benefiting but can but if you see india as a country as a nation how the textile industries grew here because of the demand of the cloth in uk as whole of the country or uh, where as uk was busy in the world war and there was the demand it boosted the textile industries in India at that time. So cotton industry, it got boosted. So a lot of cotton were being exported out to uh, UK and Europe. And earlier what happened when UK was investing a lot in the textile industries, what was happening, they were only taking the raw materials, raw co cotton from India. But later during World War time when they we're not investing more in the manufacturing textile industries. At that period, the Indian textile industries, manufacturing industries, it got boosted for a limited period of time, but it did happen during that period. So this was the reason why the textile exports did not stop. Other than that, there was the availability, as I have talked about. Always there was the availability of raw, raw material was always there because India has been growing cotton for a long time. You know, in the peninsula part, in the Deccan part, the uh, soil is that of black soil or popularly known as the black cotton soil. So we grow a lot of cotton in India. In Mumbai, Ahmedabad, we see a lot of cotton. And even in Karnataka, a lot of cotton plantation is there. So since the raw materials are available, manufacturing industries, textile industries dealing with cotton are present in India from a very ancient time. So there was the market, people were buying cotton, they were investing in cotton clothes, then transport including accessible port facilities were there in India from a long time. So whatever textiles they were producing because of the heavy demand in UK, they were also able to export out how? because of the port facilities were there. Then we had the labor, flavor, uh, labor, then favorable climate. All of this contributed to the growth of our textile industry. So I hope with the question itself, we have solved how the textile industries in India 
have uh, their growth have not declined even in the late 18th century so students i hope this concept has been clear from the answer itself i have given you four points for three marks question remember for your exams do not write paragraphs paragraphs in cbse make sure that you write in bullet points make sure for three marks your word limit should not cross more than 80 words so i have given you three uh, four points for this answer you choose any three make sure that you include the four point and the fifth point this two you can merge it in one point all right so let's move forward now why is the economy uh, what is this why is the economic strength of a country measured by the development of manufacturing industry this has come in 2018 and in 17 the same question has come but they have rephrased it a little bit and analyze the role of manufacturing sector in the economy of india so what are they asking basically in this question what are they asking importance So they are basically asking about the importance of the manufacturing industries in India. What is the significance? Why do we need manufacturing industries in India? Remember students in the previous slides I have told you we are going to study about the importance of industries. So let's do it now right. From the question itself we will be studying what is the importance. You, uh, Your point here to focus is they will be um, rephrasing the questions questions will be set up differently but for that we have the same answers i have given you in bullet points so let's start what it is for 2018 it had come for five marks meaning at least five bullet points should be there uh, word limit should be less than 120 words for three marks it should be less than 80 words so whatever points i have given you make sure if it if if it is for three marks you write three to four points keeping in mind that it is less than 80 words and for five marks you can write for five points or six points so let's see what are the points over here oh, wait let me first erase all the ink ink mark now it's gone so we see that the, with the establishment of manufacturing industries what happened there is growth in economy there is economic development of a country so we see with the growth of manufacturing industries the economic uh, economy of a country is also uh, growing so economic development is measured by development of manufacturing industries how Manufacturing industries, what it will do, it will help in modernizing the society. It, what it does, it brings urbanization, it results in urbanization. So it modernizes the society and what it is, it is, this is a very important point. Uh, modernizing society by investing in agriculture, by bringing in urbanization. It will also modernize the agriculture sector, the primary sector as the raw materials now can be turned into a finished product. So here we can write modernizing agriculture and also modernizing the society in terms of urbanization. And how it modernizes the agriculture because it forms the backbone of our country. The raw materials are now converted into finished products. Now, this is a very, very important point when you are going to write about the role of manufacturing industries in the growth of the country's economy. Backbone. It plays like the backbone of the country, of the country's economy. Then what it does, it reduces the heavy dependence of people on agriculture income. So if a farmer, suppose, was earlier only investing in agriculture, he was only making sure that in his farms tomatoes are grown. Suppose he's investing in tomatoes only. So with the coming of manufacturing industries, what will what it does that India basically we know is an agro based country we are based we are more dependent on agriculture products on the primary sector but if there is growth of manufacturing industries if we achieve the desired growth in the manufacturing industries what can happen we are dependence on the primary sector on the Agri on agriculture will get reduced because now from tomatoes what we can do we can make chutneys we can make ketchup tomato ketchup right uh, then paste pasta whatever you're making uh, tomato mixtures are there tomato rice for when you make tomato rice you make tomato mixtures are 
also present. So uh, then pickles are there. So with the coming of manufacturing industries, with the growth of manufacturing industries, our dependence on the primary sector can get heavily reduced and it helps in the economic growth. So we are now going to invest in different sectors of industry. So reduce the heavy dependence of people on agriculture income by providing them jobs in secondary and tertiary sectors. So not just in secondary sector, not just uh, no, the role is not just in there in secondary sector, but also in the service sectors, you will find that a lot of job opportunities will be produced because with the coming of the manufacturing industries where workers are needed to work to uh, make the finished products, a lot of service uh, services are also needed. IT sector is needed to work with the computers to have communication. So it leads to the development of both secondary and tertiary sectors. So we saw two importance over here. One is the backbone how it modernizes our agriculture, how it modernizes our society and how these manufacturing industries are reducing our dependence on the agriculture. Then what it does, it reduces unemployment. So India as a country we see we have got a lot of population, our population density is very high. In fact, in terms of size, India is um, second populous country. Uh, coming next to China but in terms of uh, density it is even more than that of China so when our population is more there is more unemployment there is poverty in our country but with the coming of manufacturing industries we can see that such uh, factors can be reduced from the society as manufacturing industries what they do they generate a lot of employment so they can be eradication or removal of unemployment and poverty from the country. For example, Bhel is a very fine example of public sector which generates a lot of industry. So Bhel is Bharat Heavy uh, Electronic Electrical Limited. So Bhel is a public sector. It runs under the government of India. It gives, it has generated a lot of job opportunities. This is just an example. You can cite other public sectors or private sectors. Um, like Tisco also, you can cite many different examples how such industries have led to the growth of, uh, have led to the generation of employment and with employment what happens, people get income and when they get income, there is reduction in poverty. Now people are now not living in poverty. Apart from that, what we see, whatever products we are producing from these industries, we are not just confining it to our own country, but we are making sure that we can expand our market and we are also exporting out to different countries. So expanding trade in commerce, we're getting linked, we're getting connected to different countries, which expands our trade in commerce. And by exporting what we do, we indulge in foreign exchange. We're doing import and export of, suppose from a country, we are suppose we're exporting out some textiles, suppose jeans. You know in India that jeans are heavily produced. It is produced in India. So a lot of MNCs, they come in India to see that, to buy the jeans from India. So jeans from India are traveling out to some, maybe to some European countries. So what we will take from European countries, we might take, uh, or from some Middle East countries, we might import out oil, gold, uh, aluminum. So such kinds of products, all right? So when you are expanding your market, you also indulged in foreign exchange. That's the reason why we have many foreign policies. We have an external ministers also. So this is the uh, this is how we, uh, manufacturing industries, are helping in eradication of uh, employ unemployment and poverty, generation of employment, expanding our market, helping us to connect, expanding foreign exchange. Apart from that, it adds a lot of, it also had a, has a lot of value added uh, properties. For example, it reduces the disparity among different tribal communities and backward areas. Why only these communities are mentioned? For example, let's take example of maybe Jharkhand, where a lot of, I, uh, where iron and steel industries are there or, or coal industries are also there so when such kind when such industries are being set up what it does in those areas these tribal people are living right so uh, these tribal people generally they live in or the backward classes people backward area which is not very developed when such industries are set up in that area so the people living in poverty in that area now has an opportunity to work and when people are working 
uh, there is less amount of unrest in the society as they are happy, they are, uh, they are having an income, they can, uh, they can live a good standard of life. So this is how it also brings down the differences amongst different groups. Earlier when they were fighting, now they will come together and work in an industry. So this is how such industries also adds in different values. Other than that, it makes our country, country prosperous. So now industries are there, economic development is there, less poverty, more jobs. So what will happen? People are now happy. There is no political unrest, less of protests will be there as they are uh, earning more. So this makes a country prosperous. Apart from that, as I've already mentioned, that it reduces our dependence on uh, primary sector, on agriculture. So for example, see, it also supports other industries and other factories right here industries instead of factories okay so for example from tomato industry agriculture now you can invest in ketchup chutney pickles so this is how other industries are also growing along with that of uh, manufacturing industries so and lastly what it, uh, how it increases all of that job opportunity reducing poverty uh, increasing the connections foreign exchange is expanded so ultimately what it does it it is expanding our economy it is increasing our gdp and the national income of the country i hope this is clear if this is not clear over here i'm going to write it over here okay so the point number eight wait Point number eight is increases GDP and national income. So at last, by increasing the GDP and the national income ultimately the economy of the country is developed so i hope this was a very important section from this chapter from manufacturing industry so students i hope the importance we have learned very properly here i have given total number of eight points are given so for three marks you select any three to four points for five marks you select any five to six points keeping in mind the number the limitation of words so next question let's move forward what is it in 2019 again it was repeated or rephrased in 2016 how can the industry industrial pollution of fresh water be reduced so here they were talking about water pollution how it can be reduced so give different various uh, suggestions of ways what are the ways to reduce and then suggest any three steps to minimize environmental degradation so in this case they're not only focusing in water pollution but they're also focusing on maybe noise pollution air pollution so all of this so we're going to cover both of these in one question for water pollution select the uh, points which are related to water pollution for environmental degradation you can take one from noise pollution one from air one from water pollution so let's see how in india various measures are taken so i think first i have given about fresh water pollution how you can reduce so minimizing the use of water for processing by reusing so industries they are dependent on water like heavily dependent on water for various purposes workers are there laborers are there to run instruments to run app appliances what do you need you need water so a lot of water is needed so how can you reduce the pollution or the use of water by minimizing the use and how will you minimize you suddenly suppose one uh, appliance or equipment was first um, you know, in the beginning was needing 20 liters of water to run an hour all right so if need 20 liters of water to run an hour how will you minimize its use if there is any if it is releasing it water when it is running out that water can again be if it can be reused then what will happen it will reduce our use of water or dependent dependence on water so what do we need to do we need we need to minimize the water use by how by reusing that water then installation installation of water treatment plants at the industrial sites for re recycling now the industries they're throwing a lot of waste effluents industrial waste have been uh, uh, drained into the water or whatever their um, machinery is there when the water is being released out it is released out with many chemicals so they should 
be some installation of treatment plants or some equipments or instruments must be there which are recycling these water before releasing them. These should be recycled before releasing and or recycled and then can be reused by the same industry. Thirdly, what we can do is rain water harvesting. So in places where there is scarcity of water, what they can do, they can uh, harvest the water, meaning they can collect the water. Like in places like Rajasthan, uh, you see there is very less amount of water is there. And industries like what? Copper. Copper industries are present there as in Rajasthan you get a lot of copper. So if there's a manufacturing industries which are dealing with copper products, there also if they need water, so they can indulge in rain water harvesting. Whenever there is uh, heavy rains, they can collect the water for their use. In Northeast, you will see places like Northeast is already uh, a lot of, it uh, experiences a lot of rainfall, but still in places like Meghalaya, if you are going out for tourist, uh, tourism and all, you go, go out for trekking, you will see even on the hilly area mountains, you will see that bamboo, bamboos are present where, from where they harvest water pipelines. Bamboo pipelines are there and they save the rain water. So if you rainwater harvesting is present, uh, is done, then it can meet the water requirement, it can minimize the water use, all right? So this, these are some of the ways to control the pollution to save water. Then what do we have? Treating hot water and effluents before releasing into rivers and ponds. So we have already talked about establishing a water, installation of water treatment plants. So before to be recycled, these plants should be established or then other treatment methods can also be there biologically or some chemically. Uh, these water should be also treated before these are released into the water body so that these do not pollute the water bodies because with pollution of the fresh water, we also harm the aquatic fauna and flora and many people are also dependent in rivers and ponds for drinking purpose. You take a lot of fresh water from such, such areas. Apart from that, lastly, we have legal regulation of overdrawing of groundwater reserves by industries. Now, wherever in a place, whenever there's an industry set up, they need water. And what did they do? They bore the um, ground and they take out the groundwater. This what will do? It will reduce the water in the ground. It will reduce the groundwater. So industries will pull out water heavily. There should be some legal regulation. Suppose this we have also experienced. Suppose you are your place is nearby, your stake nearby one industry. You will be experiencing a water shortage problem if such industries are set up because they draw a lot of groundwater. So if you are also having a well or a bore well in your place, then you will face that your well is devoid of water because of the industry. So whenever an industry is being set up, it should make sure that it is being set up following the legal regularities. How many, how much of water they can be draw, they can draw from the ground area and uh, they are not exploiting the water, the groundwater that is present. So coming to environmental degradation from water pollution, you can take one or two points from environmental degradation. We are going to talk about the noise pollution or air pollution. So for air pollution, particulate matter in the air can be reduced by fitting uh, smoke stacks to factories with electrostatic precipitators, fabric filters, scrubbers and inertia inertial separators. So what it does, these are some sort of equipments or filters. What they're going to do whenever the industry is releasing out the smokes, they're going to filter out the smoke so that harmful smokes are not released into the air. Suppose let's take example of petroleum industry. Suppose one industry is indulging in petroleum products. So when they are uh, when the combustion of oil is there, a lot of sulfur oxides are being released into the air. So such industries, what do they make sure that sulfur dioxides are not released into the air? There should be some filtration by either by um, physical methods, by adding some filters or by some chemical uh, method where they treat the uh, oil or they can also indulge in bioremediation process where they can in, uh, use some bacteria to reduce the sulfur amount that is present in the oil. So this is, the, this is how the particulate matter or different kinds of pollutants that are present in the air due to the release of the smoke by the industries can be reduced.
Secondly, smoke can be reduced by using oil or gas instead of coal in factories. Now, in coal factories, a lot of smoke is produced out as carbon is being burned. So, with burning of carbon, what happens? A lot of hydrocarbons are released into the air and carbon, it is very, very harmful to the air. So, instead of coal, you can use oil or gas because the production of smoke in case of oil and gas is less than that of coal industries because with coal we get soot, we get carbon which is much more harmful than that of oil and gas but this does not suggest that we will now exploit our oil or gas resources because these are also what? These are also non-renewable resources. So moving forward. Lastly, we have got two more points. Machines can be redesigned to increase the energy efficiency and reduce noise. So this here we are talking about both noise pollution, controlling noise pollution and air pollution. We, can, we are also talking about saving energy. Energy can be saved by using more efficient machinery. How much electricity the machine is using. Suppose for example, nowadays what do we use? Instead of bulbs, we are using... Uh, what is it? It just went LED lights, right? So what it does from that, we can conserve energy, then reduce uh, noise. Earlier, a lot of instruments were producing a lot of like generators would produce a lot of noises. So you should make ensure that the whatever machine is there, it is fitted with some silencers and not uh, producing a lot of noise because a noise pollution again can hamper the human society. If somebody elderly or kids or school hospitals are being set up near industries which produce a lot of noise then that is harmful to these people then machinery equipments can be used and generators should be fitted with silencers because mainly we see that generators are generators make a lot of noises so whatever generators these industries are using they should be using silences along with them so next time you see anybody riding a bullet motorbike and he's making a lot of noise make sure that person is using silences in their in their bike and not producing noise pollution so with this we have covered pollution freshwater pollution and also environmental degradation i've given you nine points in this question so for three marks again three to four points for five marks five to six points so choose whatever point you like and write in the exams so let's move forward and talk about the next question. This has come in 2018. How has the ever increasing number of industries in India made worse position by exerting pressure on existing fresh water resources? Again, this is talking about the water pollution, how it is exerting a pressure, meaning we are now getting devoid or our water and rivers are getting depleted because of lot because of set establishment of lot of industries because we overdraw a lot of water from rivers now this might not be a problem in the northern plains where the rivers are mainly himalayan in origin where we the rivers they are fed up they are fed by both rain and by uh, the glaciers but in peninsula part where a lot of manufacturing industry mineral resource industries are present here the rivers are what they are shallow and mainly seasonal they are dependent uh, morely on majorly in the rain so when water is heavily being overdrawn from such rivers it can lead to what it can lead to depletion of the water in the rivers and sometimes the water will uh, the river will ultimately get dried up so this is how a lot of pressure has been exerting in the fresh water resources so how you can prevent this from happening industries depend heavily on water we know to run it depends heavily on water. So rise in projects of hydroelectricity leading to decrease in river water volume. So here they are asking how there is uh, how there is a pressure uh, happening in fresh water because of industry. So how it is happening because industries as I have discussed earlier also it depends heavily on water to run equipments, appliances to for hydroelectricity purposes for uh, to uh, for the workers they are working to run to have proper sanitation facilities so industries they are heavily dependent on water and where will they get this water they are getting it from the fresh water from river bodies from ponds whichever area is present whichever water bodies is present nearby then elect uh, industries need a lot of electricity earlier they were dependent on uh, thermal uh, power plants but now a lot of hydroelectricity projects have been built plants have been built so with 
coming of a lot of hydroelectricity power, a lot of water from the rivers are being overdrawn. Some areas are facing a lot of water scarcity problems. So such these two points tell you that how pressures have been how pressure is being uh, put on fresh water bodies. Thirdly, increase in water pollution as industries waste and effluents are discharged into rivers and other waste water other water bodies. So we have talked how these industries they release their water. Uh, which is mixed with heavy harmful chemicals. They are mixed with uh, recalcitrant, meaning um, chemicals that cannot be broken down easily. Uh, such chemicals are mixed with water and they are released into the river waters or water bodies. And when human beings or animals or the aquatic flora and fauna, they get hampered because of this. So this is one other pressure. Lastly is growth of industrialization in cities and now even in villages is exerting pressure on water resources. So with growth of industrialization, with building of industries, with growth which in turn results in urbanization, this is resulting in exerting pressure in the water bodies, in the water resources, not just in the city areas, now also in the village areas as we see how manufacturing industries, they mostly are being established in some isolated village areas where they can find more cheap labor, where they can indulge in uh, women laborers or child laborers and tribal communities. So these are exerting pressure on the water resources, not just in cities, but also in villages. So with this, we have dealt with what? The pressure regarding to the fresh waters. Now, 2017, analyze the roles of chemical industries in Indian economy. So, let's talk about the chemical industries in India's perspective, how it is growing the GDP of India. Now, chemical industry is also one of the major industry in India. This, all of this, we have discussed in uh, the. You have studied in the chapter uh, very elaborately, but for your examination point of view. It has come for 5 marks and how many points I have given? Wait. Okay, I have given you 7 points. So for 5 marks, remember to write 5 to 6 points, word limit less than 120 words. Do not exceed these, okay? This. So chemical industries contributes how much? 3% of the GDP. So we saw that industries were contributing how much? 27% in which 17% were being um, was the contribution of the manufacturing industry. So different kinds of manufacturing industries are there from where 3% is what chemical industry. So 3% from 27% from 17% of the manufacturing in the 17% of the GDP that the manufacturing industries are contributing from there 3% are is being contributed by the chemical industries itself. So it is the third largest in Asia and occupies 12th place in the world. So your homework can be, you can see which is first and second, but for now do not go and see and check which are the first and second country in, uh, countries in the Asia where chemical industries are being set up. But uh, for your board exams, just remember the position of India. India stands in third position and 12th place in the world. So it comprises both large and small scale manufacturing industries. So chemical industries like alcohol industries are there. So if you go and visit your chemistry labs, you'll see a lot of chemicals are there. Organic, uh, uh, organic chemicals are also there. Inorganic chemicals are there. So it can be of a small scale and of that of large scale, big industries and small industries. And both of these industries, they're contributing to the growth of the GDP. And what is the percentage? 3%. Rapid growth has been recorded in both inorganic and organic sectors. I've already mentioned. So in chemistry, you have already learned what organic and inorganic are, organic where C, H and O are there and in inorganic where carbon is not there, right? Hydrocarbon, it is not hydrocarbon. So you already know the difference. So by this, you see that chemical industries work in both organic chemicals and inorganic chemicals. So coming to next points, inorganic chemicals include C. The examples are given for your reference, sulfuric, Acid, fertilizers, synthetic fibers, plastic adhesive paints, these all have contributed to the growth of GDP in organic chemicals. What do we have? Oh, I have written synthetic fibers here also. Rubber, plastic, dye stuffs and petrochemicals. Now, synthetic fibers can be made both from inorganic and organic. All right. And lastly, the chemical industry is its own largest consumer. So this how it is its own larger consumer? Suppose it is producing one chemical A. 
B, C. Now to produce the chemical C, it needs chemical B. To produce chemical B, it needs chemical A. So this is how the chemical industry is its own consumer. All right. So I hope till here it is clear the role of chemical industry in increasing India's economy. Let's move forward now. Classify industry on the basis of source of raw material and how different they are. Now in India we see two manuf two types of manufacturing industries are mainly present: agro-based and mineral resource industries. So first is on the basis of raw materials only. Agro-based industries. So agriculture, as India is majorly an agro-based country, so lot of industries, manufacturing industries, they depend on the products, raw materials that are coming from the agriculture industry from the primary sector so raw materials from agriculture products for example cotton jute silk woolen rubber sugar coffee tea edible oil these are all coming from the agriculture primary sector for cotton we will do cotton jute silk these will all will be coming from primary sector and will convert them into textiles so textiles manufacturing industries then sugar sugar cane from sugar cane will produce sugar from coffee beans will produce coffee from tea leaves will produce tea or some other packets, processed tea. So this is how the manufacturing industries, they run parallelly to that of the primary sector. So we have agro-based industries, manufacturing industries. And number B, what do we have based on the raw sources, raw material? We have mineral-based industry. You know in the peninsula part of India, it is rich, it is endowed in mineral resources. A lot of, so a lot of manufacturing industries, iron steel industry, aluminium industry, so they are based in the peninsula part of India. So a lot of mineral based manufacturing industries are present. For example, iron and steel, cement, machine tools, petrochemicals, these are all examples of mineral based manufacturing industry. So 2006 it has come. Next question in 2006, compare the economic activities of the private sector with that of public sector. So we know in the previous slides I have discussed that manufacturing industries can be set up by the government or by some companies. So what is the difference between private, sorry, private and public sector? Public meaning it is uh, for the, it is run by the it is run by the government, whereas private sector will be owned by some individuals or group of group of individuals by some company. So here, what happens? Public sector it will not its main motto is not just to earn profits, but also to see that uh, all, it also has some other agenda to for the growth of the economy. Main motto is not just to earn profits, but for private sector, their main activity is guided to earn profits. Simply, they are not going to invest their money and establish one industry. Their main aim is to check that they are earning profits or not. After that, different uh, activities such as generation of uh, employment, generation, eradication of poverty, after the activity of earning profits, it will be followed. So government provides all services in public sector, whereas private sector is dependent on the private owner. So uh, when establishing of the public sector, it will come under what organized sector. So the government will see that there are la labor acts are falling or not. There are some legal provisions between the employee and the em employee. They're getting their rights or not. They're following the government policies or not. But here in private sector, uh, if it is a very big company, it is it comes in the organized sector. But still, if you're working in a company, it depends more majorly on the owner. What are the rules uh, the owner has planned and what you have to follow? Because before joining the company, you're going to sign some document. So this everything depends on the private owner, how he or she wants to run his company. So government raises money for various activities through taxes. So if you're working in a public sector, oh, to have the investment what government does government is cutting out some taxation whereas here what they do they collect money for the services they provide some investments are there they will look out for investors who can come and invest in their company and put capital where in this case government will be looking after all of these factors the motto we have already discussed so example of public sector is railways post office bail as i've already said then here tata steel reliance all of the time we are seeing Mukesh Ambani, right? Reliance then, uh, these are all example of private sectors, big private sectors in 
India. So both public sector and private sector, remember, is contributing to the growth of GDP, to the growth of our national income. So this is one one mark question, which one of the following is a private sector industry? So I have said that Bale is public sector, Tisco, Tisco oil and sale. So what is the answer? Tisco. So these, these are the full forms for your reference. So now let's move forward and talk about map work. So from this question, we know this time 20 marks is going to come, uh, 19 to 20 marks is going to come from geography. So from earlier chapter, mineral and power resources, only map work was coming. Here are some theoretical questions are coming. We have solved the previous year questions. Now just solve the map questions which are coming in your exam. So cotton textile industries. So from your exams, they might either ask you to locate these places I have given also the states over here, all right? So what you need to do for your exams, you need to know where these states are present. So just have a map of India, outline map of India, remember where the states are. So you have to locate it. So they might ask you to locate, maybe they'll ask you a question like this, locate two cotton textile industry in India. Or they will ask you to locate, locate indoor and Surat, the two cotton textiles of India. So they can rephrase these questions in different ways so we are just going we are going to what we are going to do is we are going to uh, locate these points cotton textile industries on the outline map so some major cotton textile industries are given what are what are these mumbai indoor surat kanpur and kumbhatur so mumbai where it is it is present in maharashtra wait all right so we have mumbai over here Mumbai in Maharashtra. Then what do we have? We have Indore. So Madhya Pradesh is this. Madhya meanings meaning Madhya Pradesh, the middle province. So what do we need to locate here? Indore. Indore now you know is one of the cleanest city in India. It is also contributing now. It is growing rapidly. It is contributing a lot in the GDP. So Indore, what do we have in Indore? Indore we have major cotton textile industry next we have surat where is surat now we know gujarat is a place ahmedabad in fact is now known as the cottonopolis of india earlier it was mumbai so in uh, gujarat also a lot of cotton industries are there so surat is present over here see nearby mumbai you see remember this is gujarat right so below this edge we will have surat let me just remove this part. So we have Surat over here in Gujarat. Next, what do we have? Kanpur. So Kanpur, whenever we, Kanpur is a very um, popular um, place's name that we hear in movies or TV shows. We'll be hearing about Kanpur a lot. So Kanpur is where? It is in Uttar Pradesh. So this is Uttar Pradesh. See, here we have Uttarakhand. Uttar Pradesh is the major Uttar meaning or the major north province of India. So it is named as Uttar Pradesh. So in here, over here to the north, western side, what do we have? We have Kanpur. Remember when we were kids, we used to joke about Kanpur. What is the distance from Nagpur to Kanpur? So remember Kanpur, where it is? Kanpur is in Uttar Pradesh. Nagpur is in Maharashtra. So anyway, we have to locate Kanpur over here. Then Kombatur. Where is Kombatur? It is in Tamil Nadu. So here, in the southern states, this is Karnataka, which is shaped like a cashew. Then we have Kerala, a slight thin state over here. And in the southeastern part is where we have Tamil Nadu. And over this region, we have Kumbhatur. Kumbhatur. Oof, so we are done with cotton textile industry. So how many are coming from your examination point of view? Indore, Surat, Mumbai 3, Kanpur 4 and 5. So 5 are important from your examination point of view. You'll have to locate it or directly they'll give you, the, suppose they'll give you this point and they'll tell you what kind of industry is present in this part of India. So you'll have to write cotton textile industry. So we are done with cotton textile industry. This is very, map work is very important for your exams. Let's move forward now. 
and talk about iron and steel industry. So what are these? They have given six iron and steel industries in India. Durgapur, Bukaro, Jamshedpur, Bhilai, Vijayanagar and Salem. Now Jamshedpur was the place where the iron and steel industry was set up for the first time by the Tata group. Jain Tata, I think it was. So iron and steel industry, we have Durgapur. So where is Durga worship more? It is Durga is worship in West Bengal. Where is West Bengal? You see over here one gap is there. The state nearby this gap. Over here we have Bangladesh, right? This is just zoomed. Okay. So this is where we have Durgapur. In Durga is in is worship in West Bengal. So we have Durgapur over here in West Bengal. And what do we have in Durgapur? We have iron and steel industry then we have bokaro where is bokaro bokaro is in jharkhand so see this is uttar pradesh nearby uttar pradesh what do we have we have bihar bihar later was divided upper portion the north portion was the bihar and the south portion was what jharkhand so here we have bokaro and below bokaro we have jamshedpur Wait. Just below Bukaro, remember to locate Jamshedpur. By Jamshedji Tata, the name has come Jamshedpur. So we have it in Jharkhand. Then we have Bhilai. Where is Bhilai? You see over here we had Bihar, then we had we have Jharkhand. Uttar, uh, West Bengal over here. This region is Odisha. So this portion we receive thin, a thin state is present, like like a slice, like a hot dog. So this is Chhattisgarh, and over here we have Bhilai. And what is present in Bhilai? Iron and steel industry. Then we have Vijayanagar. It is where it is in Karnataka, the cashew shaped state. A lot of iron and steel industries are present in Karnataka. You have heard about Kudremukh where iron and steel industries are present and a lot of mining activities were there which now has been restricted. Then we have Salem in Tamil Nadu. Earlier in cotton textile we located Kumbetur over here in Tamil Nadu. Remember? So here in Salem we have what? We have iron and steel industries. So for iron and steel industries, we have located six. For cotton industries, we have located five. Map work is very, very important from your examination point of view. I am repeating it again and again. So remember all of these places where it is situated. They will give you this point and they will ask you what is the uh, major manufacturing industry present over here. So you'll have to write Durgapur and what it is, iron and steel industry. And lastly, we are going to talk about software industries and how many it is given. Eight software technological parks or IT sectors are present in industries. So, you know Karnataka is uh, endowed with uh, software industries. Bengaluru is the Silicon Valley of India. So, a lot of IT sector is present in Karnataka, Bengaluru. So, first let's just mark Bengaluru over here as it is the Silicon Valley of India and what do we have? We have software technology technology parks over here. Then we have Noida. Where is Noida? It is present nearby Delhi but do not locate Noida in Delhi. Noida is present in Uttar Pradesh. So here we have Delhi and over here we have Noida. And what is present in Noida? Software technological Park. Then we have Gandhinagar in Gujarat. Remember in cotton textile industry, we have located Surat over here. This gap is there in the Gulf area. So we have Surat over here. Gandhinagar is just above this tip. So what is there in Gandhinagar? Software technological park in Gujarat. So if they give you this part in exams what you will write here we have software technological park but if they give you this point what you have to write here you have to write surat and locate what locate cotton textile industry then we have what mumbai and pune mumbai earlier we also had cotton textile industry and now we also have software technological park so we have 
Mumbai over this region. Mumbai and just a little below Mumbai, just tilt it. Here we have Pune. So in Mumbai and Pune also we have got technology, software technological parks. Then we have Hyderabad. Where is Hyderabad? This is in Telangana. Now Telangana is very easy to locate because it is in the Deccan plateau. It is triangular in shape. So this is where we have Hyderabad, which is the capital of both Telangana and Andhra Pradesh. So now we have located Bengaluru already. Then we have Chennai. Where is Chennai? It is the capital city of Tamil Nadu. Earlier we have located what? We have located Kombetu. Remember over here we have located Kombetu for cotton textile. Then we have located Salem for iron and steel industry. Now we are going to locate Chennai just at the coast of southeast coast of India. We have Chennai where technological software technology park is present and lastly we are going to locate Tiruvananthapuram or Trivandrum where it is it is present in Kerala so where we have it is almost present in the tip I am going to write Trivandrum over here okay instead of writing all the entire Tiruvananthapuram so we have located mapper cotton textile we have done five iron and steel six and eight of software technological park map work is very important this chapter in fact is very important from your examination point of view a lot of questions might arise from this question uh, from this chapter go through this chapter study learn for your revisions we have done we have solved the previous year's questions we have discussed the importance and about manufacturing industry so with this we have come to an end of the chapter so what uh, what other areas that we discussed today we had a brief introduction of the chapter where we talk about how manufacturing industries runs parallel move hand in hand with that of agriculture industries how industrialization move hand in hand with agriculture industries we've talked about the contribution of manufacturing industries to that of the gdp right importance of its pollution water pollution environmental degradation all of these concepts we have discussed along with solving the previous year questions so i hope in your exams you can write the points briefly nicely in bullet points not in paragraphs in bullet points be clear underline or uh, yeah underline with your pen pencil or a different color make it whatever the point of word which is of importance make it highlight in the exams Again, I'm repeating right in bullet points. Remember the word limit. Lastly, we have done the map work, cotton textile, iron and steel and software technological park. So with this, we have come to an end of the chapter. Thank you very much for joining me for the revision class of manufacturing industries. It was very interesting, right? So last in the next class, we'll be talking about the last chapter that is coming in geography from your um, board examination point of view. So to join me, Come and join in V Learning. We have launched our website also. A lot of revision courses are there for your exams. You can go and search different courses. Till then, take care and bye.